Ross? Well, why so late? It's nearly midnight. Yeah, we, we, what? I, I can we, hardly hear you. He's either drunk or demented. Yeah, we've uh, had some trouble. We've lost Palanca, sir. What? Repeat that. We've lost Palanca. Then I suggest you return immediately. Now perhaps you appreciate just how dangerous Palanca is. I'll be back first thing in the morning. Then. Now, Cross. Not tomorrow. Now. But what about Callan? He's still here. He can take care of himself. Well, it's a prize cock-up, isn't it? He still don't know what Palanca was doing in Reading in the first place. No, it's all damned inconvenient. This Palanca business is becoming complicated, messy. What do you make of Cross's report? Oh, it's very nice. It's very departmental, isn't it, sir? What the hell was I doing in the police station all night long? This woman, in your estimation, what did she see? She saw enough of Cross to have a good working description. Age, height, build, dress. Enough. And the incident? No, no, only the climax. A Freudian slip, Callan. Do you what? Your choice of word. She saw the victim, sir. Accident, Callan. Victim has certain connotations. She was very shaken, sir. Yeah, it's perfectly natural in the circumstances. She was sick. Well, that sort of detail we can dispense with. Two hours later, she was still white and shaken. Good. You'll excuse me saying, sir, you are a bastard, sir. Oh, put down your banner, Callan. She was in a state of near hysteria, right? Shaking, crying, being ill. She was vomiting, sir. Then her account of what she saw, rather what she thought she saw, particularly the implication of homicide, must become suspect. Maybe. And from what you said about your own answers... Lies. Explanation. You should have seen me. It was a great performance. I really missed my vacation. Simple but clear reconstruction of the incident with certain changes of cast, of course. Yes, if cross if, hadn't if, let... If. If. What a lovely word that is, isn't it? If. If that poor sod had stayed at home. If Palanca had gone to Birmingham instead of Reading. If you'd let me handle this on my own as I asked you to. If Cross had never been born. Cross if... feels as badly about it as you do. Does he really, sir? I wonder. What's that supposed to mean? Well, from reading his report, then listening to you, it would seem that this incident... That really is a very nasty little word, isn't it? It seems as though this incident has already been filed under miscellaneous. You're not being very discreet, Oh, don't Callum. you worry, sir! I was the soul of discretion earlier on, pouring out my perjury. Hmm. Uh, this CID man, he believed you? He believed me more than he believed Mrs. Kent, yes. And the driver corroborated your story. The train driver didn't even see Cross. Again, what we want, right? Yes. Talk of the devil, where is Cross? Palanca slipped in. Yeah. I gathered that. <sighs> horrible. Horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Some old geezer porter. Deaf as a door he was. All he kept saying was horrible business, horrible. Christ, he was right. A chance of a cup of coffee, sir? No. You know, the range and complexity of Mr. Palanca's activities are only just beginning to percolate down from the senior gentleman. <clears throat> Intimidation, abduction, at least four killings. You know about Karras? Yes. We were careless there. If Palanca isn't dealt with them soon, there are going to be a lot of one-way tickets to Prague. Go home or die, eh? Crude, but effective. I'm going to use Karras. Palanca thinks he's dead. Oh, then he's in for a surprise that should bruise his Eastern European ego. Tiger and the goat, eh? Mm, poetic, Callan. Does Karras know that he's going to be crippled bait? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, well, Planker really slipped up there, didn't yes, he? Well, let's hope his professional pride gets the better of his discretion. It could work. It's got to work. How good is Palanca? He's good. That's why I want you with Cross. And what about the inquest, sir? Oh, yes. The inquest. <laughs> You're doing days? Yeah, Callum prefers nights, thank goodness. Who's there now? Farrow Martin. I said it'd be an hour. Any hint to Palanca? One false alarm. How did Karras take it? He laughed. Good. Has Callum said any more about that Reading business? No, no, sir. He hasn't mentioned it, but, uh... I hate hesitant answers. Anything to say, say it. But what? He seems preoccupied, sir. Yes, I'm right. 
It's worrying. When is the inquest? We haven't heard. There's nothing to stop the coroner holding it any time. Well, are you involved then? The most important single thing about this section cross is its anonymity. That must be preserved at all costs. I'm only praying that Callum doesn't get temperamental. From the look on his face, the pain's bad. An attack of conscience. Mm. If he can get through the inquest without involving the department, I don't want to use pressure. Fewer people who know about this, the better. Was there, was there anything in the papers? A couple of paragraphs in the national late editions, a small feature, a picture of the wife and children in the local paper. And the woman's story, was that mentioned? Apparently she's had a nervous collapse. Well then, can't see what Callan's brooding about. It can't be anything but an open and shut suicide. Sometimes, James, you delight me. Sir? So young, so insensible. A Sherlock Holmes bus conductor and a conscientious policeman. That's all we needed. Look, any good copper is always going to follow up information received, however improbable. Kyle's obviously a good copper. He's on his way back to Reading. He said this evening. I didn't want the department involved. Blimey, the department is involved, right up to its pale blue neck. Listen, what did you expect? That nobody was going to follow up Mrs. Kyle's statement? Look, when's it going to get through to you, sir? I am in dead trouble. It was an accident. Look, we've killed an innocent man. Now, why don't you go down to the coroner? You tell him. And while you're at it, why don't you tell the widow and the kids, eh? We're awfully sorry, you see, we were after this other fella. You've been around long enough to know that this section can function as it does, primarily because few people know we exist. I do not intend to widen that social circle. They're trained to treat people like numbers, like ciphers. Dispensable, indispensable, white file, blue file, red file, That's yellow file. That's the only way we can work. All in the public interest. In the end, yes. Well, what about my bloody interest? Listen, mate, if I go down there to that coroner and I get caught for perjury, are you going to help me? Not on your nelly. I tell you, we're all, we're all numbers. We're all bloody zombies. You're the best man in this section, Callum. Oh. Probably the best it's ever had. But for one thing, you became deactivated because of over-involvement. Because sometimes I showed a normal amount of human emotion, sir. Exactly. Oh, stuff it. All right, what do we do? Put me through to Chief Superintendent Rutherford, Special Branch Reading. This is priorities, hurry it along. That's gag job, eh? In the interests of national security. Oh, naturally, naturally. If it ever leaked out that we invoked a top security restraint in this case, it would lead to a press orgy, public inquiry, even the Boy Scouts in Whitehall would have a field day. What about me and the coroner? You're on your own there, Callan. You're too right I am. If we as much as approach the coroner, it could be very dangerous, and I don't intend to take that degree of risk. So I'm on my own. It's the only way. Right, sir. Then I think I should warn you that perjury is not my speciality. Brotherhood, Hunter, you have a CID officer, Kyle. Inspector Kyle. Eight thousand pounds. Are you out of your mind, Callum? Well, of course, there is an alternative, sir. Which is? I could go to the inquest and blow the whole issue wide open. You could, but you won't. Look, sir, with, with Mrs. Kent confused and Kyle gagged, the jury might easily bring in a verdict of suicide. Precisely. Well, look, don't you care? Don't you think we owe her something? I mean, how much is one dead husband worth anyway? I couldn't get that amount of money without a lot of questions being asked to which I do not have answers. Oh, my God. Now, don't do anything we all might regret later, Callan. 